<laughs> I'm here with Jason. Hi. And um, <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's this wonderful shift happening here uh, since I've arrived. Or God, I don't even know how to describe it. Actually, there's just this movement happening from it's very very strong in my mind from projects to prayer and in a way I even feel silly saying that because the purpose of the projects is to be in prayer but um, I've discovered <laughs> quite to my dismay but I've discovered that there is a lot of healing uh, for me in my projects because there's a lot of blocks to the prayer coming into my projects and the way that you know, if projects are the way that we're spending a lot of our time, then there's huge healing opportunities here. And um, so since arriving here in Camus, and I mean, part of the reason I've come up to Camus is to just really drop more deeply into the purpose of my life, of the projects, and really get back in touch with the passion for awakening and for healing and so you might notice the style of my shows has been changing over the last few weeks where it's gone from or maybe haven't noticed at all but it feels very apparent for me where the shift has been from more of a an event based or PR based into like actually all of that is really meant to bring me deeper bring us deeper into a connection with the spirit so got Jason here with me today because we've just been diving more deeply into this the last few weeks and um, yeah it feels like a really rich topic for for me lately and I'm inspired to share a little bit about about it <laughs> and um, yeah it's looked like a lot more spaciousness and a lot dropping away in terms of the things that I'm doing so that where before there was a pretty strong direction that the projects were my way out. We say that sometimes, like the function is your way out, and that gets equated with projects, but really the function is, is happiness and staying in touch with the guidance and the way that the Spirit would have me direct, would direct my day for me. So the spaciousness has been coming in in such a way that the prayer has now become the way out. And I have been experiencing this sensation where um, I will get very overwhelmed and the solution to that has usually been okay where do I need to get clear in my projects but really the focus now is on relationships and I'd love to hear much more about this from you because the focus now instead of like when my mind gets very very full what is the answer it's not to go in and cover it up basically with mm -hmm. a distraction it's there's actually something the Spirit's wanting to show me and to just relax and let that be revealed. Mm -hmm. So I wondered if you could just share more about this. I want to call it a new approach, but it's not a new approach. It just feels very new for me. <laughs> but this approach that's really coming much more into the forefront and um, prayer and relationships and letting the blocks surface. Yeah, well, you... You came in even yesterday morning just to connect about what which projects you should go on. Was it admin or I forget, some kind of note that you had to send out to the community. And I said, well, let's just pray together first. And in the prayer, neither option was really what you were to be doing. It was to just be in a bunch of emotion, just moved through even old family thoughts or patterns you saw in your parents and then underneath that just this uncontrollable depth of I don't know would you call it sadness or mm. some kind of a grief and like I can't do it I'm never going to be able to do it and I, I mean I was pretty happy inside when this was happening because I just thought this is beautiful this is what it's all for and you know just held hands or I just sat there quietly and then we didn't really say anything and it just moved through and then we had a five o'clock call you know that we were five minutes late for and I just felt to move into that and said you can come and rest or not come at all and 
He said, no, I'll come and lay on the bed and watch you guys. And we got into it, and at one moment I looked over at you, and you were like so lit up, and you had all these ideas, and you were just, <laughs> you were firing them out, but it was from no pressure and no, no sense of need. And that's what everything's, everything's being reversed. It's, you know, it really isn't in the project. There's actually a line, you could hand me that song of prayer we just saw it today, and we read it the other night. In the first line of the prayer section in the Song of Prayer, prayer is the greatest gift with which God blessed His Son at His creation. It was then what it is to become, the single voice creator and creation share, the song the Son sings to the Father, who returns the thanks it offers Him unto the Son. Prayer is the greatest gift with which God blessed His Son at His creation. We were joking, like it doesn't say function is the greatest gift with which God blessed His Son. Projects are the greatest gift. <laughs> or project. <laughs> project. Prayer. And so we were just trying to really make that the focus. And in a sense, they're actually the same, the same thing because when you're in your prayer, there's a merge with the body just does what it does to extend that gift, which is the purpose of the projects. But when the project becomes a thing in and of itself, you've lost the prayer. So we've turned everything around again. Yeah, wow, I can even just feel it just brings up, <laughs> I feel very vulnerable, it brings up tremendous shame, like how is that even possible to lose sight of something so much? But it is under there, it's like I keep feeling it in my mind, it's like a river of fire, and maybe this is you sharing with me as that all that emotion was moving through the other day and I found it kind of amazing as that emotion was moving through because the thoughts that were coming up were not things I've never seen in my mind. It was actually like, oh, I didn't realize there was so much emotion associated with this thought. It actually felt very easy. Mm -hmm. And then I'm finding that as I, like, so the projects are meant to cover over this tremendous fear and panic of, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my God, everything is going to fall apart. And like slowly relaxing the grip on that mm. to just be quiet, be with myself and like the fear, the thing that, that keeps the grip in place is like, oh, it's bad news. Like you, you just wait, like you look there and like there's that line in the course, like God will strike you. Oh, it's from the fear to look within. Like, God will strike you blind like, when you see what you've done or what mm -hmm. you're doing. But I've been discovering it. It feels really thrilling, actually, in a way. It feels like what I've been longing for through the projects is actually mm -hmm. a connection when I sit and just allow these things. Like when I allow myself to look at my thoughts more deeply, I can see that if I follow any one of them down, it brings up this, like I, I get flipped upside mm -hmm. down. And that, and that is the feeling, like it, feels kind of strange to say, but it, it really flies in the face of the numbness that can come over. Mm -hmm. Like, no, everything's fine. I got it. Mm -hmm. I got it. Mm -hmm. Don't come closer. Yeah. So I'm just really, I don't want to use the word inspired because I use that word a lot. And it's, it's more than that. It's like a, I'm really, it's got my attention that this works and that it's, it's thrilling and that it's simple. Mm. And that it has nothing to do with what I thought it did. And, and the thing is that the fears that were there, of like God will strike you blind or you're going to find something malicious inside or it's actually just one small, like very, very tiny correction that then, um, I think I was reading it in This Moment is a Miracle um, from the section on finding true guidance. Um, Spirit, it's a perfect example actually, when I relaxed and let the show come to me, Spirit had me pick up this book and um, there's a part in here from the turning away from ego guidance section where um, <laughs> here it is, one of the deep truths that isn't really known in the world is that if you have wrong-minded perception, a misguided behavior will always follow. And it's so it's not about trying to fix the behaviors or trying to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic as it's sinking with like trying to 
rework things in my projects. That's actually not it. Like it has to be taken deeper to this place of where am I choosing for a wrong-minded perception? And then to just like find that tiny little tweak, which looks like all the emotion being mm -hmm. able to move through until then we have that call and it's like that pressure of, I have to know what I'm doing. I have to do it myself. Everybody's going to be upset with me if I let all these things go. Mm -hmm just comes through very naturally it's mm -hmm. not even just a natural alignment mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know if any more is coming to you around that but i as i said i just feel like this process right now has my full <coughs> attention it's it's amazing today's lesson was as god goes with me wherever i go and he says all the separated ones feel a tremendous sense of loneliness and separation and, and are covering it over with all the distractions of the world. So when I think of, you know, that quote that just getting in touch with what's deeper underneath the wrong mind, you know, he says if you just sink deep into your mind and listening to David's reading today, just sink deep, 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 it is possible that in an instant you can go so deep that you feel that presence and that knowing that God goes with me wherever I go. And that, you know, taking that is really the answer to everything. You can't get it wrong. You can't mess it up. You really don't need people. People don't need you. So I found that inspiring. And we put out a prayer today in our group meeting, which maybe I could share, because we went to, uh, we went to see the Mormon well, everything about the Mormons yesterday, we went to the Temple Square, which has like a visitor center and a tabernacle choir building where we saw this beautiful, at 12 o'clock we were guided to see, what do they call it? A, uh, an organ, organ recital. recital. This guy who's been playing since 1960 who just stood up there and, you know, he dropped some pins just in this massive theater to show us how well the sound carried. He said that he's so joyful to be playing with this massive organ and he's so excited and it never gets old. After 60, 40, 50, yeah, almost 60 years, it's 2019, 59 years he's been playing and he's still passionate and excited. And, and that made me more passionate than, <laughs> than the organ playing and just to feel his love coming through and then all the people that we would meet, you know, they were like, hey, how can I help you? And, Susanna had a beautiful um, n notice that whenever we would ask them a question, none of them would ever say, that's not my area. They all seemed to know the times of all the events playing and where to go and what to do. It was very cohesive. Nobody brushed everything off. They took their, their role seriously in the sense that they wanted to serve and they had this joy and this love. And then we even watched this. Joseph movie, Joseph, Prophet of the Restoration, where, you know, he basically took Christianity and added an element where he said that modern day saints exist. And basically, Jesus has appointed me as a modern day saint. And there are others. And they visited him. And he had, they guided him to where these gold plates were buried in the earth from when Jesus visited the Mayans. And the Mayans had written this down and hid it in, it, in the earth. And he told them where to find them and then how to translate them. And then Jesus and other prophets and disciples visited him. And I mean, it was just these amazing encounters of divine beings. And he was very uneducated, but because of his faith, and as Peter said this morning, our Peter who lives here, he said he just got down on his knees, and not in supplication, but in, in a deep, earnest call for help. God, I need to know your ways. Show me. And all these series of encounters, and there would be healing babies. Babies would be healed around him. And it just really showed me that, that when you accept, God goes with me everywhere I go. And it's not for a select few, and it's not for certain conditions or in certain projects, that we too can have these miraculous encounters. And I did say that it's much more um, movie material when you have white angel beings visiting you. But today we put out the prayer that let us today have that same kind of witness back to our prayer from God in clarity, in messages, in a, in a sense of peace, 
in a, in a, a holy relationship, in a show that's delivered somewhere. And so we're all in that prayer to see how that would be delivered. Because without that, without knowing, God goes with us wherever we go. What are we doing? You know? So it was a nice reminder to see that Mormon devotion and, and apply it to our path. Yeah, I really enjoyed that movie and that, that example in particular too and then what you shared this morning because I mean just a few weeks ago that's, never, that's something I would never have allowed myself to do but that's what lives in the deepest part of my heart is I want to know that you're with me always. That's the only prayer seems like mm-hmm. I want to know that you're with me always that you're guiding me that you you know your hands are on my shoulders that you're guiding me towards a, a more expansive love mm-hmm. and that yeah just um, the best way to put this uh, I've just noticed a lot of unworthiness in my experience too so then the unworthiness actually falls away when I give myself the spaciousness to have these kinds of experiences and as we were talking before like there's even a a feeling inside like this purpose is rooted strongly enough in my heart that it's like if i do that like if i really give myself permission to have that experience it will come it will come and it's not coming from jason it's not coming from living miracles it's not coming from this gorgeous studio we built or my projects it's coming from my desire alone that is that is all i need to wake up is my desire the course is something like Oh, God, I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> but it's like, uh, truth was lost to you by your desire for something else, and it will be restored to you yeah. by your desire for yeah. it. Not projects, not these gorgeous flowers. It, like, my desire. Yeah. And yeah. then keeping that flame alive is all I need to do. And that's really what the purpose of this whole shift is, is can you find the fire in your heart and keep that alive, fan that flame mm-hmm. above all else? I remember this one of the online retreats we did recently, because Jesus says, you know, take my hand, and he means it quite literally. And I remember Jess saying one time, she was watching the show, and I said, okay, everybody, we're all going to go into the holy instant now. And she was like, you can do that? Okay, I guess so. And so she's like, so she just went into the the holy instant because it was, oh, well, we're doing that now. It's a fact. Just like today's lesson, God goes with me wherever I go. He's telling us it's possible. Okay, let's fan that flame. All right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really that simple. That's it. It's like yeah. all we're looking for is permission <coughs> to be who we are. Like, yeah. you mean I can do my lesson every 10 minutes? Right. You mean I can, you know, I'm, yesterday's was I'm blessed as a holy son of God, and we were reveling in that because we're like, oh, it's perfect. You know, we're out and about, and we we're just having a lot of fun with it through the day, but... I can give myself permission to remind myself of my purpose and who I am every 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, okay, maybe I don't feel that experientially, but I'm going to call that forth. Like, will the kingdom of heaven, not yeah. wish the kingdom of heaven. That's amazing. Yeah. A little lit up about that at the moment. Yeah. So simple. And we were surrounded by that yesterday. We were surrounded by these witnesses to that devotion, like Zach said, you know, we need to meet these people just to have these encounters. And they were always wanting to be of service and available. And watching the movies, we also watched a movie the other day called 17 Miracles, which it too had a sense of devotion and actually quite a lot of miracles with, with deep prayer, you know, that bread would appear out of nowhere and, um, you know, meat would be delivered on this very long journey from Midwest to where the Mormons finally settled in Salt Lake. So between that movie and Joseph, Prophet of the Restoration, where they too, a lot of them got slaughtered because of their faith, it was just a good reminder that that under extreme conditions, even though Jesus said, you know, I I was crucified, you do not need to do this. Under extreme conditions, you know, you do reach deep down into your heart and go for that prayer. And I myself want to cultivate for myself in this ministry without the necessity of the extreme conditions, how, you know, how do we get to that place where we see the need for God? And Because you said you wanted this show to be about humility, prayer, humility, and guidance. guidance. And to get to that place where I don't know, 
because it's really when we think we know something, how, how to run a ministry, how to do a project, that we block that experience. So constantly getting out of the way. And the extreme conditions, when they have no food and they don't know where they're going and they don't know how they're going to get help. You know, they would pray and someone out of the blue would just walk up and show them the right way or God provided this man to give them some meat for their journey or even a raising of the dead experience. They had buried this girl in the snow because she wasn't going to make it, make it. And they're going along and then they remembered God had told them before they started this journey, your whole family will make it to Salt Lake before it was Salt Lake. <laughs> you, will be, you will make it. And so she's like, oh my God, no, we need to go back and get her. And the husband's like, she's dead. You can't go back. What, are you crazy? She's like, God told us our whole family will make it. So they turn the cart around. They go all the way back. <clears throat> In the middle of a blizzard. In the middle of a blizzard. They warm up her feet with her hands warm up a face cloth, put it on her neck, and she opens her eyes and she's fine. And they take her on the journey. That's tremendous. That's yeah. tremendous. And, it, and um, we just released this video, um, The Function of God's Teachers is the Awareness of Dreaming. I love that. I love that concept because the dream, the dreams uh, symbols feel very close to me. Like it's something that I can get into experientially. And so I feel like an example like that is like you really don't place a limit on it. And you say, mm -hmm. he told me this and I'm going to trust that. Yeah, exactly. And then anything can happen from there because yeah. you're, you're throwing all of your faith, yeah. all of your eggs oh, in one basket. It's, it's like this, if, this, if I'm to fully accept that this is a dream, I need to have witnesses that I can trust. Mm -hmm. And you can't... You have to make the commitment first. You have to make the yeah. commitment first to saying, he told me, I'm just going to check it. What's the, I'm just going to go back and see if my daughter's still alive. What's the worst that can happen? We've already buried her and left her for dead. Yeah. She is dead. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, okay, well, show me then. Yeah. And I was really inspired too. I don't think I shared this yesterday, but how everybody just needed to do their part. It wasn't, I mean, they, they did come together and pray together, but when it came right down to it, everybody needed to cultivate that need. Everybody needed to call forth, their, call forth the miracles for their experience. It, and by each of them doing that, like, you know, a handful of meat isn't going to save a company of 500 people traveling in a blizzard for weeks and weeks on end. But that woman praying, mm -hmm. and then this other woman praying, she, she's left behind and her mm -hmm. daughter prays with her she's she's gone mad she's totally lost hope and lost faith and so her daughter's there with her and she gets down on her knees and she prays and then suddenly bread appears so it's everybody doing their part and cultivating the need mm -hmm. and it's from that mm -hmm. the bread and the meat and the, the other soup pot and mm -hmm. i don't know it just all felt yeah. really perfect yeah. even the the woman at the very end who just worked hard all day and then sat down by her wheel and was almost ready gonna, to die and her family gathered around her and they all just realized that we have done our part. There's nothing more that we can do for the day. And it was like a surrender moment. And in that surrender, from the other direction, Brigham Young's son, I think, or Joseph Smith's son, came with the horse and the wagon and they all met them and started helping care from the other way. But the message being that, again, without the necessity of those extreme circumstances, if we can get to the place where my part is small and God's part is great, it's just like a humbleness and a giving over to a greater plan. And they just showed it in very dramatic ways in these movies. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're very excited with this. This devotion the last few days. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like it's such a rich topic too, and like I don't know. I always pictured the unknown being scary. I mean, that's what the ego would paint it as. You know, don't look in the dark. Hmm. You're, you're going to not like what you find. But um, yeah. I've, been cultivating this experience, or um, it's not the right words. I've been just dropping into this experience where if I can get, if I can 
with this block removed of all the busy doings, if I can just stay so present with the way that I'm feeling, which Jesus tells us is the one right use of judgment. How do I feel? And then, oh, okay, there's something there. And then just stay with that. It's like, it's inspiring to me in a way that doesn't have language in the Course. It's like, my heart has secrets to tell me. Why wouldn't I want to pay attention to that? It's the most exciting thing. Full stop. Like, it's the most exciting stop. thing. So, and then from that, like, this whole world opens up to me. I'm able to see that I can trust. There's nothing hiding in the dark. Like, I'm able to actually, like, um, I think it's a quote of David's or from the Course, but, like, um, miracles increase trust. And then you have to trust to have the miracles. So it's this cycle, but... Mm -hmm. every little scrap of my mind that I give over to him, he returns to me with, like, treasure. That's so simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I feel like I want to invite everybody into this prayer that we're sharing here, like, just inviting a direct experience inviting myself continuously into a, a surrender of what I think needs to happen or what I think I'm supposed to be doing and like taking a step back to let him lead the way. And again, this is so bizarre. It feels so simple actually, but it feels like it's time for an experience, a deeper experience of trust and being guided and letting up the blocks so that there can really be true healing, like let them up and through. So I just want to invite everybody into this prayer of not knowing, prayer of not knowing, and that that's actually a joyful experience, one of deep relaxation where everything's just revealed. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a joy. Mm. And thank you everyone for joining me today, joining us today. We'll see you soon, next week. Love you.